In this coding exercise, we have been asked to build a currency converter. So this currency converter here is pretty straightforward. It is a method and it takes in two parameters. It takes in an amount and then it takes in a location. We only need to build this to match for three locations, the US, Japan, and the UK. And at the very top, I placed the various symbols that we need to place into the system in order to get it working. Now, there are a number of ways to solve this problem. I'm going to use a kind of different type of string interpolation. This is a way that you don't really see a lot with a ton of Ruby developers, and that's part of why I want to show it to you, because it can come in very handy like you'll see right here. So if I have a variable, and I'm going to put something in it like 10.2 right here, and the variable is called money, I can actually pass this in a few different ways. So I could pass this into a string by using kind of traditional string interpolation and putting the uh, pound followed by the brackets and then I could do money and now if I run this code And you'll see 10.2 gets put right there. And that works perfectly fine. And then we could do some things in order to change this. But when it comes to doing something like changing the value of currency in terms of being able to add decimal points and do things like that, I think there's actually a better way in Ruby. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to start off by, before we build out our method, let's just kind of create a base case scenario. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in here, and then I'm going to use the percent operator, followed by a dot, followed by two, followed by F, and then end it out, and then put in another percent operator, followed by the name of the variable. And I'm going to explain what this is doing here in a second. But as you can see, if I run this through, now we have our currency, it's converted. It has two decimal points, even though we only passed in one, and it put the dollar sign right in front of it. Now the way that this works is this little percent sign is actually mapped right here. So this is another way of doing string interpolation. And if you've come from other languages, such as C++ or some other languages like that, this is actually the way that they use string interpolation for their entire programming language, and that's a very popular way of doing it. You don't see a ton of people doing it in Ruby, mainly because it's a little bit harder to read, and it is harder to read. This doesn't make as much sense as doing the traditional hash with the uh, curly brackets, but in certain cases like this, I think this actually makes more sense, and you can see why, because it's very easy to do things like pass in 0.2, which is going to round this, and it's going to give us two decimal places, which works phenomenal. Now, if I want to change this, so like let's say that I want to actually have this have zero decimal places, I can do 0, 0.0. Now if I run this, it removes that last item. So this works perfectly for things like currency conversion. Let's clear this out. And now let's actually get working on the method itself. This is going to be a perfect situation to use a case statement. And a case statement is very similar to the if-else construct, so we can have conditionals and different things like that. But for case statements, as if you've never worked with them before, I think you'll like them for this specific instance because they can be very clear and they read almost like plain English. So here, I'm going to say case and location. Now this location is, there's nothing special about the word. The location is just right here. It's the name of the argument that's being passed in. So case, location, and what this is going to do is it, the, our case statement is going to look at the value of location and then based on what the value is, then it is going to 
give a different result. So it's going to run a conditional on the statements inside of it. And the syntax in Ruby for using case statements is case, and then inside of that you can have when. So I'm going to say this is a case, and when that is the case so that it is US, then I want you to render out this version. This is going to be very similar to what we just implemented. So I'm going to do a dollar followed by a percent followed by a period to F and then follow that by amount. And so we can test this out just right here. So if I type in currency converter and pass in, let's say, 4443 and US. This should work. And there you go. You can see that right here on line 13, we now have $440.30. So I'm going to clear that off and let's create a few more. So we need to accommodate, as you see from the test, Japan and the UK. So let's get Japan next. So I'm going to say Japan, and the format for Japan, as you can see, is a little bit different. We don't want to have any decimals whatsoever, and instead of the dollar sign, obviously, we want to go with, uh, and this is the, I grabbed the wrong one, that's the pound symbol. We want to grab the yen, paste that in, and now I'm going to get rid of these two. Okay, so we're going to have the yen, and then followed by that, we want to have no decimal places. And we kind of already walked through how to do that, so I'm just going to do a period 0, .0 so we're going to do 0.0f, and now if I come back here and change this to Japan, this should work, and there you go. It removed the decimal place, and it put the yen right in front of it. Clearing that off, we only have one left, and it is the British pound. I'm going to grab this, and coming down when this says UK, then we want to, oh, I grabbed the wrong one, or I should say I copied the wrong thing. So here I have the pound. So there you go. Vim wasn't playing nice with me right now. Okay, so now I have the pound in front of it. Now this is a little bit of a special case right here. So instead of having a period, if you notice down in our test, it actually is going to have a comma, and that's very common in the Euro uh, European, European area where we have a comma instead of a period. So there's a few ways we could do that. I'm going to, I think, do the easiest way possible. This is going to stay exactly the same. The only difference is that we're going to have a pound in front. And now what I'm going to do is actually wrap all of this in parentheses and then call G sub on it. And with G sub, this is a global substitution. So I am just going to replace the period with a comma. And now if I come down here and change this to UK, you can see that that now works perfect. So right here we have 444 pounds and then 30 whatever their smaller percent is. But this is the way that the format would work in Europe. So yeah, clear this off and all of our tests should be passing. So let me delete that, save it, switch over here, and run our spec. And there you go, one example, zero failure. So great job if you went through that. You now know how to build a basic currency converter in Ruby.